My apologies, the battery had uh, went out. I'm so sorry. It's a video a day in May, video number 24, and we're talking about parenting on this day. And family, this is very, very, very important because this is an epidemic and this is a crisis going on out here. Adults don't, they're walking around in full adult bodies but they have the mindset of children and they can hurt you very bad while they're going through their little tantrums and all their little disconnect. It's a complete disconnect. They don't hear you. They're on a tangent. Okay? So then therefore, we as parents, to rectify this is we have to tune into ourselves and tune into our children and begin to instill some better values, some morals, and some ethical behavior in them so then therefore they don't go out into the world dysfunctional. And then now they're carrying this into their subsequent relationships and they're also feeding that same venom to their children. It is generational. Please understand that. And understand that a lot of times when, um, like I was saying before, it went off. You cannot bring these types of people into your home. If you watch Steve Wilco's show, oh my God. Every week, they got some woman that brought this man. Yesterday, it was a woman brought this man into her home. He got all these cases of child abuse in different in a whole different state or whatever. She met him online within four months. Her very first meeting with him, he had, they had already established that he was gonna move for wherever he was from into her house, and she only met him online. She didn't do no background on him, no nothing. Her family was on there just in tears. Her brother was in tears because she was blindsided. This is some blunt, I mean, the manipulation is so cold-blooded. Ladies, please understand, these motherfuckers that you're meeting out here in the world, and you taking so much stake into them, oh, he loves me, oh, he's this, oh, he's the best since sliced bread, and all this kind of stuff, you better get a relationship with his family. That's the first motherfucking thing. If he's going to be everything since sliced bread and this and this and this, have a talk with his mom. Have a talk with his siblings. Have a talk with his ex-wife, his ex-girlfriends. Have openly discussions with his children. That is where you're going to get the meat of what this person is really about. Because your nearest and dearest, you're going to have some resemblance of them and you and vice versa. So anytime you meet somebody and they don't want you to, they, they, their whole life is secrecy. You know what I'm saying? Their storylines change from one moment to the next. When you start talking about personal things in their life, they become agitated. They change up the subject. They don't want to talk about them. They want to talk about you. But everything that you talk about them with, they're using it as ammunition to talk about you. Because it's like, you can't talk about me because you did this, 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 and this. Didn't I say they was kids? They don't know. Their mindset is still on whatever abuse, neglect, abandonment at 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9, 11 years old. They're still in that mindset. Thus the reason these very adults are lured by predators with treats, trinkets, and bullshit. If you look at them, they are so surrounded by materialistic shit, it moves them. You know what I mean? They are so moved by what you got, what I got. I bought the new hotness, the new iPhone came out, the new guy. Oh, yo, shit ain't shit because they got the new Galaxy now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got to have me a 2017. Don't give a fuck about the fact that this is a Ford Focus. It's just the fact that. This is a 2017, I'm cooking with gas, you ain't on my level, I'm a high society motherfucker, check me out. You know what I mean? These people are walking around in this motherfucking society. And regardless to what you do for them, they are a give and get motherfucker. And as long as you are feeding into their ego, their abuse, their neglect, their shortcomings, their have-nots, you're never going to fear the cup. You're never going to.
Because that's the way they base everything. They base everything on getting things. So by giving your children everything, 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 they never really have to work for nothing. They ain't got to work for nothing. They, they, don't, they don't know nothing about, okay, when well, you got to sacrifice and build up to this, you got to save. You have to earn it. They become adults that want that right now. They want kids stuff. <laughs> I had one. This motherfucker went ballistic on me because he wanted a motherfucking jersey. Nigga, you almost 50 years old. I wanted a jersey for my birthday. You got me something else. That ain't what I really wanted. I really wanted a jersey. But this is a man almost 50 years old. Okay? So, men, if you, you might meet a woman. She want these little trinkets, this little bullshit. She's not talking about stability. She's not talking about, um, you know, serenity. You know, let's, you know, let's pray together. Let's grow. That's not what they're talking about. They're talking about, can you give me? Can I have? Give me, give me, give me. And you're constantly giving. Nothing is ever going to be enough. So you can give, 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 and you're going to be tapped out. And when you're no longer able to give, you're going to be exchanged for the next victim. And we are breeding these type of children. Now, all the time I'm telling this boy, do not go to bed with my kitchen nasty. But I'm the pussy ass parent that didn't follow through. So then therefore, who can I be really mad at? Am I supposed to be mad at him? Or am I supposed to be mad at me? I'm mad at me because I did not follow through. If I told him what he was supposed to do, then therefore I am, my word is supposed to mean something. And last night, my words didn't pretty much mean shit. Yeah, he cleaned up that room, but my kitchen is nasty. Kids need to know that they are chores. There are things that you have to do every day. And my kids are now high teens to young adulthood, and I'm still going back and forth with them about doing chores. Why? Because I was married to a man that allowed a woman to come in here and clean my house up twice a week, and he was okay with it. And that's what my kids had got used to. Why do I have to make up my bed? When a couple times out the week, somebody's going to be here. They're going to clean up my room. They're going to do this and this and this. We had a yard guy come clean up the yard and all that old type of shit. Now, oh my God, my landscape is fucked up. And I have to go through tooth and nail to get Isaiah to go out there and clean the yard. I can't tell you when the last time my oldest picked up a rake around this motherfucker. I ain't even got no grass in the front. Okay, I was like, fuck it. I might as well go and do the wrap around, you know, do the, do the a semen slab to come up to my door and shit, you know. <laughs> because guess what? When you, when kids have been used and accustomed to you providing things and them not working and earning things, they become adults that they don't. Those men they don't pay to get their uh, breaks done. Nor do they want to learn how to get their breaks done. But they'll go and pay somebody at the tire shop to do it, though. You know what I'm saying? Why should they wash their car when they can take it over there and pay these motherfuckers right here? Five, six, seven, eleven dollars to wash their car. These are grown ass men. And there's nothing wrong with paying. There's nothing wrong with paying. But you also have to be versatile. Get your ass outside and do what men are supposed to provide, protect, and prepare. Ladies, instill this in instill instill these values in their sons as little boys. Girls are supposed to be nurturing, caring. They're supposed to be givers. They're supposed to, you know, nourish things and manage what their husbands bring into the home. I know motherfuckers is probably, oh, it's a whole different day and time. Okay, well, then I tell you what. Just go to Proverbs 31. It's going to start off with how virtuous she's supposed to be. And you're supposed to be a help meet to your mate. Okay? That is the truth. You got to find something else to believe other than the bullshit that you continue to put in your head. And then you're going to walk around this life misguided, by yourself, 
lonely as fuck, angry, understanding is bad, and nobody wants to fuck with you. That will be the bottom line, period, and point blank. Because people are going to believe like, wait a minute, this motherfucker way too old to be acting like this right here. What the fuck happened somewhere? Okay? But... Once you begin to realize what the hell is going on in this world, and once you get to realizing, you know, how the way in which this world works, and you become accountable, you become an all-in adult, like, you know what, I'm fully grown. When you get to that mindset of, I'm fully grown, fully grown people, they stand accountable. Fully grown people apologize. Fully grown people look you straight in the eyes. And fully grown people don't lie. They truly don't. There's no mass. This is who the fuck I am. Guess what? This is me. This is what I bring to the table. If it is okay with you, let's grow. If it does not align with where you're at in this life, then you have to respect the fact that this person is not there. You can't make them. And if they're ready to go, back up out the way and allow them to head on in their path. That's it. There's nothing more, no less. So I'm going to end this as I need to run the food for less, go get some cheese. You know what I'm saying? Get some stuff to make some little Spanish rice, you know, and get my kids fed. Is that right? Not always. Because growing up, let me say this. My mom fed us. We had a restaurant growing up, and my mom would go to the Hostess Bakery. I don't even think they got the Hostess Bakeries anymore, but some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Go to the Hostess Bakery. There was one in Paramount alongside of the 91 Freeway, okay? My daddy used to work for Kirkland Construction Company. It used to be right behind it. It was Kirkland or was it Jaeger? Because I know my dad uh, worked at uh, both. But, <coughs> excuse me. But right there, they used to have a hostess bakery right there, right alongside the freeway. And me and my mama, as I told you guys one time before, me and my mama, you know, my mama took me wherever she went. I was the youngest, and I was in on everything. My mom was also a beauty shop owner and operator. She had two, okay, on Alondra Boulevard, one right there on the corner of Bradfield and Alondra, and the other one over there by... Tom's Burg, I mean, uh, uh, John's Burgers right there. I believe it, what is that, White and Alondra in that other little shopping center right there. So my mom had two on the same block, and she worked at one, and then she uh, uh, um, uh, just pretty much, you know, ran the other one. We'll go back and forth, you know. But I'm telling you right now, as a kid, I remember sitting in my mom's beauty shop, and I was in a high chair. I remember those things as a, as a, as a little kid. The things you think your kids don't remember, you'll be blowed back on what they can remember. You'll be blown back on the things that they seen, felt. You will be blown back, okay? So you can think for one moment, my kids don't see what I'm doing. Oh, I'm doing this right here. They got their own life. They got to find their own way. Kids aren't taught empathy. They're not taught how to regulate their emotions. I mean, they're, they're, not, they're not born with that. That is what we teach them. But if you're already disconnected, how can you teach them? You can't. So what happens? It becomes a domino effect, and they just take this on and on and on and on in their lives. But guess what? My mama used to always say, you're once adult, and twice a child. So which means everything that you have instilled in them, there's going to be a time where you as the parent is going to depend on them. And what you instilled in them will be karmic to your ass. Because either they're going to take care of you and not complain about it, or they're going to put your ass in a facility, in the corner in your chair, so then therefore all you can do is look out the window on the life that you used to have. And the mistakes that you made, and you're sitting in there, probably sitting in urine, feces, whatever, to cubitus, stage two. It's karma, though. 
I mean, now, I'm not saying that everyone that are in these adult care facilities and convalescent homes and things of that nature, that this is the reality of everyone that's there. It isn't. But it's a high probability of most. And the family would much rather prefer to put in their money and pay to allow this person to be taken care of instead of them taking care of them themselves. They can't take care of them because, hell, guess what? They feel as though you didn't take care of them. So they much rather prefer to do what you did for them. Let me just pay the money. I'll pay the money. I'll pay the money. Call me and let me know what the status is. Call me and let me know how they're feeling. Call me and let me know, oh, mama fell today. Oh, okay. Is she all right? Did she break a limb? Oh, okay. All right. Well, call me and keep me. Is she okay? What is she doing today? Did she go to activities? I was a charge nurse. So these are the questions that people would ask me. But as my parents begin to get older, I took care of mine. I did. My dad died of cancer. <laughs> you know? And I, took, I helped feed my father right at the house. And when my mama was afraid that he was going to die, guess what? That Friday, I took him on in the hospice. Broswell Colonial Care. I ended up working there later on. Okay? After my father died, I went on and applied. But my mama, that Friday... She was like, Tina, I don't know. Your daddy might die any day. And I, I just can't watch him die like this. And guess what? I contact Broswell's Colonial Care. We set it up. He was already had hospice coming. A hospice nurse would come a couple times a week, make sure dad was getting his morphine and this and this and this. But I had him taken out of the home from my mom that Friday. That early Monday morning, before 5, we got the call that Dad had already passed. So, anyway, it ain't about that or whatever. But I'm saying to you guys, though, you reap what you sow. And you have to pay attention to these people that are walking around these motherfuckers. Because a lot of times, you are meeting people that you are assumed are ready. You are assumed are cognizant. You are assumed are respectful. You are assumed are connected. You are assumed emotionally balanced. Responsible. You know what I'm saying? You thinking that these people are self-sufficient and independent? You thinking these people are like-minded? You think these people stay prayed up? You thinking all these things besides the fact that they look good or, you know, they sex game is on whatever level that you might deem a 10. Okay? So, they're walking around this motherfucker. And they need people to bring them in. They need people to stroke their ego. They need people to give them what they need. And if you're not strong enough, you will be a victim. In every movie, there's a victim and there's a perpetrator. There's an antagonist and there's a protagonist. There's a villain and then there is the hero. You have to figure out which line you're going to be in. Because on every movie that one of them took place, they were always defeated. You understand me? So, you can call these different things into your life if you want to. This video here is simply to open up your eyes, bro open up your mind to look and to listen. And to be observant of your surroundings. Be observant to what you're nurturing up. Accept the apologies that you were never given. Because our parents made mistakes. Being a parent... You're never given an instructional manual on how to conduct business. And see, that is the reason why I say you can't treat all of your children the same. Yes, you have to love them unconditionally. But you can't talk to this one the way you talk to this one. You just can't. They're individuals. You know? So on that note, it is 1128 I have to run to the store because I really would like to be able to allow my son to take um, some of this to work with him. And he has to be to work in a little bit. So um, let me get done with what I need to do as a mother. Do I need to do some cooking videos? Absolutely, I do. But allow me to figure out what it is that I feed them. 
that is going to be much more healthy and healthy conscious that I can also bring upon the platform so you guys can also share with your families. I already got a whole list of bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Banana pudding, cobblers, all that bullshit. Gravy this, that, biscuit that, fried this, that, barbecue that, baked bean this, all that. What you're cooking, playlist. Look it up. A lot of them are there for the very menus that you guys are asking me for. And I'm here to give it to you. I promise you I am. But just allow me to balance my chakras. Allow me to balance my reality. Allow me to continue to figure out who I am as an individual and as a woman. So then therefore what it is that I present to you guys and what I present to the world is I'm actually standing in my truth fully. And I'm working on this every day. Because I am standing in the know that is, as long as I'm putting out good works, God is going to continue to provide my needs. So on that note, family, no weapon formed against me shall ever prosper amongst me, my compound, and my children. I love you, family. I love you guys for watching. Get on your A game. Stand fully present as a parent. Because our kids need us and they're looking at us. Okay? So, I'm gone. Let me go. I love you guys. Bye.